name is Alicia Sisney and I'm a Mar Maryville University nurse practitioner student and this is my abdominal assessment on Georgia. So if Georgia was a patient that came in with abdominal pain, the first thing I'd start out doing would be asking history of um, what the pain was, how it started, what made it worse, what made it better, to describe it if it was dull, aching, you know, if um, she was uh, having any diarrhea or um, regular stools, when her last bowel movement was, um, if there, what color the bowel movements were, about the urine, if it, what color it was, if there was an odor to it, if she had any vaginal discharge, um, especially since she's female, we also ask about um, any kind of, uh, any chance that she's pregnant, um, if she's sexually active, if she's had any drainage down there, any bleeding, um, that way we can really focus in on what problem she's having. And then after you do the um, history, you're going to do your assessment. And every assessment starts out with inspection. So I'm going to have you lie down, Georgia, and I'm going to inspect her abdomen. Um, normally you would actually want to uncover her abdomen so you can see it. Um, in this case, I'm not just so that she's not exposed to her um, video preferences. But you would look at the color, you would look at the symmetry, you make sure um, there was no bulging, had any hernias, um, or any um, like palpations. You look at the hair on the stomach to see if there's abnormal hair growth or the vasculature, um, seeing if there was any abnormalities with that. The next thing you do in your assessment is you auscultate. You can have to listen to up to five minutes in each quadrant if the abs, um, bowel sounds are actually absent. A tinkling sound is normal. Hyperactive would be hearing bow songs like every five or fifteen seconds. And the next thing you would listen to is you would turn it over to the bell of your stethoscope and you would listen to the aorta. And when you're listening here, you're listening for brewies to see if there might be any problems with. Then you're going to go to the iliac. Well, and then femoral. And the next thing you're going to do is palpation that you actually should hear. Um, Tiffany. And all the quadrants. If you hear dullness, it may mean that there's a mass or something um, along those lines. And then you're going to percuss down. In this case, I'm doing the right. And you're going to listen for dullness. Can you take a big deep breath for me? And, for me? and this is trying to feel for the liver quarter. Okay. And you would mark that with a pencil whenever you find it. A normal liver border is 6 to 12 centimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and have you turn that way for me on your side. Then you'd list, um, take another deep breath in for me percuss down the intercostal areas. On the left side, you're, you're um, doing spleen on this side, and uh, it's normal in the ninth and 10th um, areas to, um, to uh, feel dullness for the spleen. You can look back on your back now. You wanna then go into um, some palpation. Do light first. If you're looking for any masses, Ask him at this time, is there any tenderness anywhere? No. Okay. And then you would do deep palpation. Can you take a deep breath in for me? With this, you're assessing further, seeing if you can feel the organs. It's not normal to fill a spleen on this side. With most patients, you can fill a liver. Um, and then downward. And then you would assess the... Um, 
symphysis pubis area to see if the bladder was distended. And then you can put your hands here and try to feel for kidneys. You can also, if there's any problems with the bladder, you can um, palpate down that area and that will tell you like if the bladder's distended or if maybe there is a um, hernia down there, anything like that. Um, and then 